when I look at the other candidates uh, going for this role, I feel distinctly underqualified. I think they're all fantastic. Um, by contrast, aside from being head of school council when I was about 10, which I don't think really counts for much, I haven't had that much direct experience of leadership roles. What I would say is that I've had the same experience as many other GP trainees in that I picked up leadership skills working across the front line in the NHS over the last five years. I know from clinical experience that you can't get anything done on your own. MDT is everything. Um, that's how I practice and that's how I would lead. I think that sharing a decision and sharing decision making means that your own narrow view of things is widened. You get to take on different perspectives. And I think that means that the whole team feel included. And that's what I would try to do and how I would try to approach leading in the RCGP AIT role. I also know that sometimes it can be really hard to raise your voice. I mean, we've all had that in class where everyone knows what the problem is or the answer to a question, but no one really wants to be the guy that puts their hand up. Um, and I certainly know I've been in a few junior doctor forums where the whole group know what the issue is, but no one wants to be the one to raise their voice and flag it up. And I think part of the job of the AIT chair role needs to be supporting people, supporting each other so that we feel able to stand up for the interests of uh, trainees. I would class myself as an average GP trainee um, and my aim would be to amplify and represent the voices of GPs across the country who maybe don't feel directly involved with the college or feel that it's quite removed from their day-to-day -day sort of practice or that they are far removed from decision making. Um, my skills and attributes are pretty much the same as any other GP trainee I'd have thought. We're natural leaders already. I think we're really good at guiding people and working together and leading in a collaborative way. Um, I like to think that I'm a pretty open person. I'm always up for a chat and I'm really interested in new perspectives. So I'm always all ears, as you can see. Um, I don't take myself too seriously. I think that's a really important trait for anyone who wants to lead. And uh, I've been told that I'm fairly level-headed and I'm not particularly flappy in a crisis, which is always a useful trait. My main priorities in the AIT chair role, I think that we need to improve awareness of the committee and the work that it does. The faculty system, a lot of people that I've spoken to, and this may just be reflective of me, but a lot of people I've spoken to weren't really aware of the committee, they weren't really aware of the faculty system, they don't know who the AIT rep is. I don't think that's anyone's fault. I think we need to increase um, awareness. I think we need to make it feel a lot more uh, inclusive. I think we really need to increase the sense of ownership that people have towards the college and their representatives. And I think a lot of that is just frequent dialogue. Um, I also think it's really important to boost morale. Uh, this is the best job in the world. And I'm sure I'm not alone in having heard rumblings about, you know, being stuck doing service provision or specialists going on about just being a GP. Uh, this is a fantastic job and it's unique and it's varied and you can do anything you want and I think that we need to make sure that everyone is energized and their morale is boosted and that would be a big big part of what I want to do. Um, from a personal note I also think that perhaps trying to tie in more resources for the curriculum would be good. I think the curriculum is I mean, it's a monster at 1600 points or whatever it is and uh, I think maybe we could help direct some of the self-directed learning How would I evolve the role? Um, I, this ties in with what I was saying earlier. I really want to increase training participation. I'm pretty new to social media. I don't know if you guys have seen The Social Dilemma on Netflix. That scared me off a little bit. Um, but I think that when we launched the AIT chair thing, the Royal College put it all out, which was awesome. Um, and it got something like 10 likes and six retweets. And seeing as we have over 10,000 trainees in the country, I think that either means that very few trainees are on Twitter or more likely means that there just isn't that uh, participatory level that, that would be ideal. And that I think would mean that everyone felt that they were represented and felt that this was something that they owned or, or something that represented them. I think the way to do that would be more direct input, more ideas from people, more surveys, more feedback. I think that the committee have, looking through, have done a fantastic job. Anthony and the others have done, you know, amazing work. 
But I think that they, by having more information from people and feeling like they've got more dialogue, I think they will be better able to represent their constituents. Um, yeah, with that in mind, I think my main aim for the AIT role will be to increase the visibility of it. Um, and that is working on everything that Anthony and others have already done. What sets me apart as a candidate? Yeah, I always hated questions like this. It's kind of like when you're that new person in class or you're just starting a new group and they always say, name one unique fact and go around the circle. And I am terrible with that. I can't build the alphabet. I don't have any cool celebrity stories. I, even my hobbies are fairly boring. I mean, I run, I like to meet up with mates and I play the guitar. That's about it. Um, I'm a pretty normal trainee from the middle of the country. I've got experience across the UK. I trained in Wales. Um, I'm now doing my foundation work in the Midlands and now GP training in the Midlands. Grew up in the South. My wife's from Northern Ireland. So I have some experience of things across the country. Um, I guess having my first son on the way, fingers crossed, um, means I have some understanding or an inkling of the importance of work-life balance for a lot of trainees. And I've certainly seen working through uh, maternity leave with my wife and looking at the variety of advice people have been given regarding um, maternity leave and advice around that. I've seen some pretty awful things on T and Empathy, uh, and I think that's something that we need to work on. And I also think that's something that perhaps I have a bit of an insight into, although I'm sure many of you know far more than me uh, about that. Thanks. <laughs>